Hello, and welcome to Lost in Criteria, the show where we talk about the Criterion Collection. I am Lee Adam Glass, and as always, my partner is... John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. That was probably the best timing we've ever had on an introduction. I was ready. So I'm going of course to... I ruined it by talking about it. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to completely ruin the flow of this episode by talking about how you did really good that time, Pat. Thank, and I don't, thanks, I don't, Adam. I don't want to sound condescending when I do that, but I will anyway. It totally does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Adam. I'm so proud of myself. This week we were talking about John McKenzie's 1980 British gangster movie. I thought it was um, 1979. You're right. I'm wrong. It's 1979. Close to um, 1980. Yeah. Very, it has definitely a mix of 70s and 80s feel going on. Yeah, yeah. It, but it came out in 79. It's true. Um, uh, but yeah, and, and we can get into that. This movie very much is is a precursor to uh, Thatcher, England, and Reagan, Reagan, America in in what's going on in the movie. But anyway, it is the Long Good Friday. It stars Bob Hoskins in his breakout role, uh, Alan Mirren as his as his girlfriend, and in a teeny, teeny, tiny role, Pierce Bronson with no lines in his very first, very first movie. And so baby-faced. <laughs> yeah, so baby-faced. Like so Pierce round. Bronson. It's... Yes. When it's, I first it's... saw him, I had to go look at the, um, the IMDb yeah. page, because I was like, is that Pierce Brosnan? It looks like Pierce Bronson. And Why does he look like an 18-year-old? Because he was. Yeah, right? No, I don't know his actual age here, but he was he was very, very young. Uh, like, I mean, this is, you know, 1979, and the first movie, the first movie that he really, I knew of him in. I mean, ob- obviously he had the Scarecrow and Mrs. Crane through the 80s, uh, but, you know, he really came to prominence, I think, with Golden Eye and Golden Eye. And by that time, you know, he's 40 yeah, or when whatnot. Yeah, when did so, Goldeneye come out? Uh, 92, I think. Okay. Maybe 94, 95. Anyway, I'm not going to I'm not gonna bother Googling that one. If for no other reason than I managed to get some sort of uh, search engine redirect virus that my computer can't find. So huh. if I tried to Google that, I would just end up on some rabbit trail of uh, pop-ups that I'm not interested in. Exciting. <laughs> I know, well, right? This is the machine we're using to record the podcast <laughs> on. Listen, listen, I'm backing everything up, so those files are corrupted, and I've probably infected your computer and yeah. uh, everyone else. Well, I'm else's. really hoping that they have that they know we're podcasting, and they found a way to put interstitials in the middle of the, the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone else will be making money off of this. That's a great, that's a great thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> All They'll right. Like, uh, Buy Ford now! Wait, what? <laughs> it wouldn't be Ford, but I couldn't think of any other companies. Yeah, that's, no, no, it can be. It can be Ford. Why not? Um, so, yes. Uh, Bob Hoskins, really, you know, it's, since my familiarity with Bob Hoskins is like Shmi and uh, Super Mario Brothers. Um, right. <laughs> it was interesting to, to see him in a very, you know, w- very well. And he's a good actor. I've seen him in other things. He's a very good actor. But he's a character actor who takes basically any job offered him. And... <laughs> It's hard not to define someone's work by the worst thing they've ever done. Right. Super but he Mario does an Bush. excellent job in this film. He's oh, yeah. Very yeah. Believable. He's, he's a great actor. And this is, this is a great role. And, and he's got, you know, he's, he's got this sort of quiet boil in this for the first bit until it explodes. Um, right. And stabs a man with a bottle. Yes. Yes. Kills, kills his number two. Uh, Which is, on oddly enough, I know it's totally getting, like, jumping way ahead in the film too early but it was probably the least convincing moment in the film yeah not from no. him like that was a, like his breakdown after that and everything was really well acted but wait, where did they get the special effects for this film <laughs> it looks like they stole them from like flesh for frankenstein or blood yes. for dracula yes. like it's just like looks like red paint shooting out of a squirt yes. gun it's like yes all what's of going the, on here the blood in this and the next two movies we watch are all very, very terrible blood effects. Um, but yeah, that was one thing that surprised me about this movie, uh, when they went for gore like that in that scene. And that scene needs it, really. I mean, well, yeah, you need so, to see why he's yeah, freaking yeah. out, but. 
Yeah, but it is so it's so ridiculous with the with the cut jugular. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. Like, it's a very well done movie. They had yeah. a budget, obviously, because this is the most professional movie we've watched. Basically, <laughs> I mean, well, because I mean, you can't. I mean, like, obviously, Alfred Hitchcock and those were excellent for their time, but this is the most the closest to a modern looking movie that we've had. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like a flashback to like something that like somebody in like film club would make. It's like, oh man, we need <laughs> fake blood. What are we gonna use? I have I have access to unlimited quantities of red paint <laughs> and a hose. So <laughs> right. let's, uh, we're good. We're good. Like, it, just, it didn't even look like blood. It looked like yeah, red paint. Yeah. Uh, so weird. so basically, the premise of this movie, uh, if you haven't watched it yet, is that uh, Bob Hoskins plays a mobster. Uh, the mobster, really, the king of London, um, and he has decided to go legit. He's going to buy a bunch of property in the Docklands and well, turn going, it around. He's going mob boss legit. Like, I mean, he's still not well, a yeah. legit organization, but he's trying to like create a legit yeah. side to his business. Well, I think I think he's setting up for a long time full legitimacy because mm, uh, his his plan is to buy a bunch of Dockland and then make millions off of it when that land gets used for the 88 Olympics. Um, and I think that'll long-term investment. That's going to, that's going to let him retire. That's uh, true. Yeah, he unfortunately, doesn't he doesn't make it up after that. He doesn't make it to that, uh, because uh, on the well, day we that don't know, well, yeah, no, <laughs> the ending is ambiguous and we will get to that. And it is because it is, it is a great ending. Yes. Um, but, uh, but on the day that his American investor, played by Eddie Constantine, who you may recognize from our last episode, Alpha yes. Bill, um, and it, it was weird seeing him speak English. Um, well, it's really weird. I'm so confused. Eddie Constantine, I thought he he's not a French native? No, he's actually, he's an American oh, uh, expatriate. I got really confused yeah. about that. So, so like, he's, he he's actually French? American. Um, he's, he, he speaks French very well in Alphaville. Um, that's one of the good things about that movie. <laughs> one of the only good things about that movie. <laughs> but, uh, budging. But, budging. Anyway, uh, so, John, Con John Constantine. That's a, that's a different <laughs> thing altogether. Eddie Constantine's uh, character shows up. No wings up, in uh, this film. Yes, and, uh, and, uh, he, uh, uh, everything starts to fall apart just after Eddie Constantine shows up. Um, not not because it's his fault, but because uh, something has to go wrong so that the Americans don't invest eh, don't uh, don't invest in this because that's what this is really about. It's Bob Hoskins' life falling apart. Someone tries to kill his mother, which involves a uh, car blowing up outside of a church. Uh, someone successfully kills many of his partners and underlings. Uh, someone blows up one of his pubs. They try to blow up one of his casinos, but. The find the bomb first uh and this movie is bob hoskins trying to figure out who's got his number uh, yeah it's because, really it was a yeah. weird film i don't think i've ever seen a film quite like it yeah where it is a criminal actively trying to solve basically what would normally be kind of like yeah. a police procedural kind of yeah. story this is, this is this is a weird criminal investigatory procedural yeah, um, it's really weird. I enjoyed it. It's it yeah. actually it makes for a really unique story that I don't think, like I said, I've never seen anything quite like it. But yeah, and 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 in that in that regard, it it hits a lot of the procedural uh, procedures. Really, <laughs> um, yeah, it 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 has its own weird take on the police procedural tropes. Um, you know, because we see the crimes happening, and as the crimes are happening, he's trying to pretend that nothing's going on on its face because he has to convince the American mobster to invest with him. Uh, whereas, <clears throat> you know, he's got his background characters running around trying to figure things out, and then when he goes into full investigatory mode after after it's clear that he can't hide this any longer and something big is going down, you know, he goes, he rounds up suspects, he yeah, has interrogations. Them up in quite a literal sense. <laughs> yes, he uh, Puts them on he hangs drugs. them upside down on meat <laughs> meat hooks. It's 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 yeah. He uh, he pulls in the usual suspects. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah it's, it's really weird because it, yeah, I guess 
if you do compare it to like a police procedural, it follows like the same logical patterns. Just yeah, a, a guy who has no rules doing it. Yes, exactly. Absolutely no rules. Not even not even like dirty Harry no rules. This is a guy who who wants to <laughs> legitimately <laughs> people on meat hooks. Yeah, like 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 dirty Harry. Dirty Harry would just kill everybody. Um, you know, I mean that's right, that's but, oversimplifying but dirty Harry too. Yeah. But. Right. But this guy, this guy wants to minimize damage as much as possible while stopping what's going on. So, so in that regard, he's forced into an almost straight. I mean, still they like torture people, yes, but they torture right, they people cut in a man's ways. Butt ox, for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah, but they're not they're not indiscriminately killing people in in their revenge or their yeah until the very end. But which which is a different problem altogether. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I really yeah, was kind of disappointed with I like the yeah. ending of the film. Like we let's just jump ahead. Let's just talk about yeah. our favorite part. Yeah. I, like so the very ending of the film, we don't need to give spoiler alerts, right? <laughs> this is a film I, mean, I, uh, I I think we've we firmly established that we're talking about uh, we're not reviewing the movies, we are talking about the movies. Well, so. I, I just every so often I feel really weird just telling <laughs> yeah. the ending of a film. Yeah. Um but yeah, so he ends up in the car, right? And he's being yeah. and we see his emotional yeah, experience yeah. and that excellent. Yeah, the acting in that is superb, and then the flashes back to Pierce Brosnan's like still His peach little smirk right covered there. face is yes. wonderful. Like, Pierce Pierce Brosnan's peachy peachy smirk. Yeah, um, and, and you kind of get and it's wonderful, and it makes me want to punch Pierce Brosnan. And I've always, I've always, ever since Mrs. Doubtfire, I felt like punching Mr. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan. So, so. like, I got, it, it, it's weird though because we don't know that he's gonna die. Yeah, we get we the don't impression, know but we don't know because there's no yeah. reason why they would take him anywhere if they were just going to kill him. Yeah, the, the they freaking should, IRA they could just they just yeah, blow yeah. things up. Yeah, so yeah, for, they could have just for, blown for, him up. For context of the ending here, Pierce Bronson is an IRA assassin and uh, and another you know nod to the early '80s culture that this because this is this is a very this this movie is very steeped in the culture. That, oh, that yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it would be, it would be very different to make this movie set in any other time. Scarface without making it stupid. Yeah, yeah. No, really. Bob Hoskins, Bob Hoskins is, is Scarface without being, you know, complete. He slips into delusion, but he's not like, he's not. uh, But it's within the realm. He's not misbalanced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Scarface is a very clearly misbalanced character. Yeah. Um, and the cocaine helps. Uh, and the fact <laughs> yeah, that John Hos- uh, Bob Hoskins' character here, uh, the one thing that their gang is not involved with, and one drugs. thing that he, 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 you know, degrades other people for being in you know, on is, is narcotics. Um, but anyway, uh, so the RA, uh, one of, one of Hoskins' number two men, um, did some things and screwed the IRA out of five thousand dollars. I get even confused in, because he says five thousand dollars, right? But yeah. then when he goes to pay them back, he brings sixty thousand dollars. Well, I think he's he's trying because he can. Sure. And you'll remember, you'll remember, you'll remember when they said when they find out that it's over five thousand dollars, he says five thousand dollars. Right. That's such a pittance. Right. What? Why would they? And it's because the RA is political, and not they're not they're not really interested in the money. They're interested in not being screwed over. <laughs> well, and then so also he brings, like it, they mentioned that uh, like three of the top guys got yeah killed yeah. in the process, and so it's all about revenge more than anything. Yeah, yeah, it's about revenge more than anything. So he brings enough money to to buy them off. As well as pay back what he right. owes. Uh, well, I kind and of then, figured that, but at the same time, I was like, yeah. did I misunderstand earlier in the film, yeah. or did this guy oh, just yeah. go really overboard with the payback? But yeah, nonetheless, they uh, they <laughs> does it actually pay them anyway? They garnered the wrath of of the IRA, which is you know uh, in a British movie, especially not something you want to do. Um, so uh, so they uh, they tear him apart is is basic, and that's that's what it is. And that's the bulk. The bulk of the narrative of this movie is him trying to figure out who's doing it to him because no one has a motivation to do it to him. Right. He's uh, not. He's not the kind of bad guy that you see in other films where he's made enemies. In fact, he's actually yeah. from the the story we kind of get, like the background story we kind of get, is that he's made sort of peace with all the other yeah uh, mobsters in 
London, and so like there's kind of a like Pax London going on. Yeah, <laughs> Pax Britannia. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but it's not all Britain. Um, no. <laughs> and so, but yeah, and so this is a guy who he's a mobster, but really with no enemies. Yeah, and that's and no, the problem. And, he doesn't you know, know he's got... the IRA hates him for no reason. Yeah. Basically. He's also got he's also got, you know, um he's not just on good terms with all of the all of the other mobsters, he's on good terms with the local constabulary, the uh the local uh you know uh, ministers. He's, he's well not quite that high, but he's got he's got local government in his pocket too. So yeah, no he's got a li- on no his pay and... yeah, yeah. No one no one has any any sort of problems with him, and and one of the things one of the things I like about the ending is is I like to I like to think about where it might go, mm. and while they've got him, if they let him go, what he has done, what they've done to him already, and how he's reacted, uh, has pretty much guaranteed that he's he's ruined, even if they let him go. Right. Because w- those people he rounds up and hangs on meat hooks. Are the heads of every other criminal organization in London? Yeah, I can't imagine they'll be too happy about that. Yeah, and it, it's kind of weird <clears throat> because, like, yeah, it's really hard to imagine what they are going to do. Yeah, because what they're because they, and they really because also we you hear them like the other some of the other characters talking about the IRA and like how they they might be moving on London anyway, and yeah. so. It kind of like, well, if they're going to take over London, this is he's one of the easiest keys to doing that anyway. Yeah. He already has yeah. the network and yeah, like he did round up all those other mob bots, but if he's backed by the IRA Yeah. Yeah. They, they so if they make a chance. If, yeah. So it's if really, they make a deal. If yeah. they make a deal. And he's the kind of guy who seems like he might make a deal because he's pretty yeah. Other than that one explosive moment, well, two explosive moments, the bottle stabbing and then really shooting the IRA people for no reason. Uh, yeah. He is really level-headed and yeah. good at the whole negotiating thing. So Yeah, that is one one major problem I had with this movie is that scene where, where the meeting goes south. Yes. And, but it doesn't go south. It, it's planned to go south. Yeah, and yeah. it's weird because it doesn't seem to fit his character. Yeah, he wants he wants revenge for what they've done to him, and and you know there's it's always this violence begets violence thing because he wants revenge on what they've done to him, but they're only getting revenge on what his organization has done to them already. Um, so you know it's 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 that spiral that is always right. the spiral. But it also uh, seems but, odd from a man who made peace with all the other mob organizations in yeah, London yeah, because I'm exactly. sure they all screwed each other over a million times. Yeah, he could have he could have gotten out of that without not and not only just shooting them but throwing them out of a window and and causing like yeah. myriad collateral damage because uh, he like throws them onto a racetrack and then the cars blow up. Yeah, there's a huge um, car crash scene because I think it was more of a, I think that's more of a conceit to well, this is, it's going to be the '80s pretty soon. <laughs> yes, yes. Something's got to blow it's, up. There's a lot of there's a lot of precursors in this movie. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah. So it's 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 this moment of really explosive violence, literally explosive violence, uh, that that doesn't really fit his character yeah, for the rest. And, and I know it's necessary to make the f- the film have that dramatic ending where you get to see him. Yeah. Because otherwise things would have worked out just fine. Yeah. Now, and, but, and I guess, but I'm not sure I that, guess, that would have been a bad movie either. Yeah. You know, in, even even with our bad guy protagonist, we don't necessarily want to see. He, he's very much an antihero in 1979. An antihero. That's that's precursor too. That's that's very nice. But uh, and he's a very effective but, one. You root. And for he's him a very effective somehow. One. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and again, and, and it feels bad keeping coming back to Scarface, but, but in Scarface, uh, you know, there's people who now, like, root for Scarface because they're Scarface they're, posters and, and they're psychopaths. But those people are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> they're psychopaths. Well, at least sociopaths. Scar, Scarface is not, a, he's not, a, he's, he's not, a, yeah. he's not a character we're supposed to like. He's, not, he's not really an anti-hero. He's a, yeah, he's not an anti-hero. He is a villain. Yeah. He is a villain protagonist, but he is a villain. Yeah. In this in this movie, Bob Hoskins' character is very much an anti-hero, and and it helps that you know he's the victim every time we see him. 
And obviously, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he's never he yeah. never wins. Yeah, in the film, and and yeah, and even even when he's, you know, in the in the moments where he, uh, perpetrates violence, um, he, you know, like when he kills the one guy with the bottle, and it's very it's an explosive bit of anger, uh, a possibly understandable explosive bit of anger, even though it ends in a death. Um, given everything that's been happening to him in the last 24 hours, because this movie takes place, you know, it is the long Good Friday because that is the day that everything happens yeah. in this movie. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's it's an understandable act of violence, but but as soon as he does it, he knows he's made a mistake, yeah. uh, and he it's he knows that he's he's crossed the line basically, which is maybe why he goes for it with the IRA guys. But uh, because he knows he's already ruined things, yeah. so why not ruin them a little bit more? Yeah, but the guy he killed was not was not yeah. the end all be all. It's not like he killed the yeah. counselor. It's not like he killed yeah. the the police officer. He killed a member of his own organization who probably it wouldn't yeah. be that hard to cover up. No, but, it wouldn't be that hard to cover up. But it's it's I think it's it's the the psychological moment right. that he got to. To, to kill out of, you know, out of complete, you know, paranoia. Uh, because, you know, this guy has done, well, no, he hasn't quite done nothing wrong. He did come up to his wife. Or unless I'm conflating too Well, but also he, uh, um, but, uh, he well, the, the, um, the guy did, because when he, during that little confession scene, we find out that this guy did a lot of bad things, too. Like, and not just yeah, because he's a yeah. robot, but be, the way he handled the whole IRA situation was bad. He sent yeah. the wrong man to do it. He lied to Bob Hoskins' character when he came back from New York. He yeah. And then, like, we he talks about whether or not they're this guy, Jeffrey, the one he stabs, I is the so, one yeah. who sicked the IRA on Bob Hoskins' character. And we don't ever find out the answer. We don't find out if it's... Because we only hear one story, right? We don't hear Harris's story. So we don't know who actually ratted him out to the IRA. Yeah. And yeah. ratted out is not the appropriate term, but I just don't know what the term. Because <laughs> he didn't... Bob Hoskins had no idea what was going on. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean it, it would seem it would seem probably from the start of that they that the IRA, IRA knows who they're dealing with, so they know who to come after when it goes bad. Yeah, not not because anyone's told them, right, right, uh, yeah, but they, just because because he's, he's the nature of the agreement. And, yeah, but yeah, we just get into yeah. this thing where I I never do, I do not understand that that the shoot 'em up scene. It doesn't yeah. click for me. And it's really my only major problem with the film I, I, every other part i like but i do i mean the the boat stabbing scene with the bottle is pretty believable i think because we see when he hits his wife how much yeah. he is unsettled by his own violence yeah. he's not yeah he he's not the kind of person who acts in violence out of rage yeah and he he yeah and but yeah. you see he and, is breaking down he he the, this what's going on is yeah destroying him and that's a, that's one of one of the major strengths of this movie and one of the major strengths of, of Hoskins as an actor in this movie is is the portrayal of that that break hmm. because it's very slow it's very it's very long um, uh, and it doesn't yeah it's not just this snap and we're gone because you know he, he hits his wife and and he regrets it then he kills this guy, and he regrets it. Then we get, then we, you know, it's still this slow build. Um, if I if I had any problems with this movie besides that, I think it's probably the beginning when there's just so much going on with so many people. We have no idea who are. Yeah, yeah, I, I <coughs> would agree with that. They don't do a <laughs> yeah. great job of introducing characters. Yeah, and I feel like so you we get this a lot in like gangster movies. That's a thing. Yeah, like here we're going to introduce fourteen characters to you all at one time. They're all going to do a bunch of all stuff. Who, and, all who die in the next 20 minutes. Right, and then you're not going to know who <laughs> any of these people are. Yeah, exactly. And you're be so confused until somebody explains it to you later. It's like, oh, they yeah. killed Lorenzo. And it's like, I don't, I, I'm going to talk. Like, it happens in, like, as far as I can tell, lots of gangster films. And it, I yeah. just don't, yeah, it's confusing. It's, why yeah. introduce characters but, by yeah. killing them? But, yeah, my... Uh, 
Yeah, Hoskins. Hoskins, uh, sort of my God, what have I done moments certainly sell this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, like this is definitely but, one of the ones that's going on kind of so far in the Criterion Collection. One of the kind of my short list of this was actually a yeah. worthwhile watching experience. I gained something from watching this. Yeah, like yeah. I saw really good acting. And, I, and, and, I, and and just a good story. Like, I mean, other than that weird sort of psychotic break where he shoots up a yeah. room full of IRA p, p, uh, guys and then blows up cars. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of there's a lot of great moments that if they had verbalized, it would have been cliche. Like like with those, you know, what have I done sort of things. You know, he never says that. Yeah, and yeah. at the very end, at the very end when they're in the car oh, it's and, <laughs> and he's... He's, you know, going through all these different emotions in his face, and it's perfect, and Pierce Bronson is just smirking at him with the gun. You know, that smirk says, you didn't think we'd really let you get away with this, did you? Yeah. And, and, and um, you know, they don't they don't say it because Pierce Bronson doesn't talk at all in this movie. But, <laughs> but he doesn't need but to. Yeah, because you get his, but he doesn't need yeah. to. But that's the perfect, that's yeah. the beautiful part about that last scene, is there no dialogue yeah. was necessary. It's perfect. Anything yeah. they had said would have ruined it, <laughs> frankly. Yes. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And we knew uh, it was thing... coming, too. It's a weird thing, because I think that's what makes that scene, that shoot-up in the IRA um, demolition derby room so <laughs> yes. unfortunate for the audience is because as soon as it happens, you know that it's not going to work out for him. Yeah. They are, yeah. Because who would let that go unchallenged, right? No organization. Yeah. And and so yeah, obviously you're like you're just waiting for the shoe to drop at that point, point. Yeah. and that's kind of hard to deal with because it's like any sane person would know that the response from a, another criminal or, from one criminal organization to another after a whole bunch of guys are murdered is not going to be well. We'll just drop it. Oh, um, there was there was one other moment of. Of sort of violence, not not really, but when he finds the the widow at the at the uh, at the uh, graveside at her husband's graveside, the guy, the the woman who first lets her uh, lets him onto the path that there was an IRA deal he didn't know about that went wrong, mm. uh, as she's like you know grief stricken yelling at him he doesn't he doesn't do the classic like slap her get her get a hold of yourself woman he just punches her he flat out punches yeah. her in the jaw <laughs> but you know and then yeah and and again you know almost to me he he doesn't really realize that that it was wrong to punch her instead of doing something else to calm her down <laughs> but but uh, he does you know realize that that something beyond what he's done, um, you know, it is still his fault, or at least his responsibility, that her that her husband's dead. So she, you know, he promises to pay, whatever. To, to... Unfortunately, those promises mean nothing now, because yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, by the end of the movie, those promises mean nothing because his organization is down the hole. But yeah, but yeah. Um, I also really liked. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I can say I liked the music. Oh, I loved it in the no, movie. I loved it. it was perfect. It's the opening, the opening scene sounds like trying, and again, it's very, it's very, very much the time. The it's opening really... scene sounds like the tra- Trans Siberian Orchestra, but Wait. it's it's just so heavily, heavily synthesizer, and it's done it's done by a guy uh, named Francis Monkman who worked with Brian Eno at one point, uh, worked with a few different people, was in a band called Curved Air, but he is he is what, a Moog composer. What a seventies name for for a band. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh it's a very sad event. Uh, let's see. Huh? But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just so... No, the, the, the music is perfect. Because <laughs> I I don't know how people would have felt about the music at the time. Yeah. I guess it would have been fashionable at the time and fine. But because yeah. this is not that time anymore, the music absolutely sells the era. <laughs> It, like, you no, that know is... exactly what era this film is taking place in, thanks to that. As it starts, as it it's starts. beautiful. No, um, I, I actually the whole time the music was going on, I was like, I kept. What was I thinking about? I kept thinking about some other movie or something. 
because the soundtrack is really similar to some other movie as probably every other movie made this time but <laughs> like it, i was really thinking about oh, strange brew actually what? I was really thinking about Strange Brew because they use the uh, they use the heavy <laughs> move organ to control people in that movie. Like, but here's the thing: is like, I was thinking about it, like, and it made me realize just for a moment that movies from that era, the music in movies from that era, always, especially this film, always sounds like um, what movie am I thinking of? It always feels I, like it's going to be a softcore know. pornography. From that era. The movie? Yeah. Because the yeah. music is so, it's... like, jazz uh, saxophone, yeah. but synthesized jazz saxophone. And yes. it's like, yes. I don't know, I'm just waiting for somebody to, like, be pulling stockings up. <laughs> and I say, you know what I mean? I'm talking about, right? Like, it wouldn't it wouldn't even be a yeah. softcore yeah. pornography. It would be more like, um, like a film this, fatale this, movie this... or something. It's like the sexy scene from a PG-13 Right, movie, exactly. Really. Like, but it would come in, like, I was, when I heard that music, I really expected the first scene to be a woman pulling her stockings up. Yeah. Because it just, it's, it, that, that's the music, right? It's like, but yeah. man, I know, but man, I know. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? Is this a gangster movie or what am I watching? But Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that movie, in that regard, I think that's one of the other reasons the opening sequence bothered me. Because, you know, we we start with that music, and we zoom in on a house, and there's people inside talking. And then we cut to a guy getting off a boat and into a car. And then we're in a restaurant with that guy, and then we're back at the house, and yeah. people with guns are breaking in. And then that guy is having a homosexual encounter with one of the other people at the bar. And then uh, his, his new friend gets kidnapped, and then... <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's all these like quick jumps with no dialogue from that. And you know, like I, like I said, we, we know who none of these people are and half of them die in that sequence. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, <laughs> um, no, the music, does that particular <laughs> part of the soundtrack line up with what's going on? Not super well. No. Does the soundtrack overall fit the movie? Yes. Yeah. In a really weird well, and that, unsettling way. Again, you know what I said earlier. Everything about this movie is so so a product of its time, but but looking ahead into its time, you know the music the music fits perfectly, um, and you know it's got I mean, obviously it's got the troubles the IRA going and going for it, but you know at the same time, uh, Bob Hoskins' character is very much this free enterprise, uh, new conservative, right. Uh, Thatcher era England going into Reaganomics, and and you know it's it's yeah he's basically the eighties. It's a 1970 yeah, fil- seventy nine film that is basically the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, whoever it's wrote it did an excellent it's, job, or and directed yeah. it did an excellent job of predicting where things yeah. are headed. You know, it's it's with with the exception that no one does cocaine. Right. Well, this, you can't is, get this is a very right. yeah. You can't get everything in there. Yeah. No, this is very much a. But this there's is totally a dude doing heroin. Well, there is. Doing heroin, there is a dude. Say. There is a lady doing heroin. It's kind of close. It's more 90s, but... (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) He jumped a year, a decade on accident. But you can't say that. Because, see, I didn't realize how... how, When we were watching High and Low the other week, I didn't realize how how old heroin addiction... Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Popular popular culture heroin addiction, at least. (laughs) But, yeah. Um, And that was was the 60s, so... But Japan's a different country. Yeah, and, well, and... (laughs) <laughs> heroines I don't know what I'm going to say about heroin it's a hell of a drug I don't know it's just, uh, you know it's apparently much it's, older addiction than we realize but yeah yeah anyway but uh, we were, we so were. um oh yeah the music yeah, well, uh, another thing though uh, another thing Bob Hoskins on that note Bob Hoskins very accepting of his homosexual yeah. uh, friend um yeah, the homosexuality in this movie is not played, uh, you know, first off, it exists, and that's weird enough that in a gangster movie it exists and isn't played. You know, we, we do have our one our one gay character is the person who accidentally got all this started. Um, but at the same time, he's not he's not a bad guy for being gay. Right. And he's and not he's also come not in up there for, laughs, for being gay. Which means that he's, he's not in there for laughs. Yeah. 
is kind of an anomaly as far as as far as movie treatment of, of homosexuals and certainly gangster movie treatment of homosexuals. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, like like any a lot of other movies that are this violent and even even dramas that that are this violent. Um, I guess one thing I'm thinking of is is Willem Dafoe's character in Boondock Saints, for instance. Um, his homosexuality is played for laughs. Yeah. You know, it's because he's so over he's so over the top gay in what he does, so campy. And this guy's not campy. Um, no, you know at all. And and it does you know in a way his homosexuality does lead directly to his death. In but that, you could, Pierce Bronson. But experience. it's not in an absurd way. I mean, because yeah, I mean, you get the same kind of thing in a film with a a heterosexual character and a sort of your femme fatale thing. I yeah, mean, like, yeah, it, you know, I mean if he had not been a gay character, they could have easily done the same thing with a female IRA agent. And yeah, so, like, exactly, it's, it has, exactly. his homosexuality is not directly connected to his death, but, so much as his being had a they done it, blood. Had it, had they done it with a woman, we wouldn't have gotten to see young, young mm, Pierce Bronson no, in a speedo. I, I guess maybe they made the decision based on the fact that it was Pierce Bronson. <laughs> like, man, we really want to use this guy. He smirks like a he got, smirks like a hell of a dude. We gotta put him in and, the end. And he's, he's got such a hairy chest. <laughs> Here's my notion, okay? Somehow, like, in the screening, like, the test screens where they, uh, they were trying to, not the test screens, but where they were, like, doing the, um, sort of auditions, they had Pierce Brosnan yeah. and, and Bob Hoskins <laughs> doing that car scene, but there was no actor going on. They were just both, like, making faces. And, like, oh, we, we have to make it so that this is possible. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh. And then they wrote the movie want, around that. I, Maybe those two were just in a room. I want, that, I want that to be true. I really want that to be true. Like somebody um, wrote a movie based on the fact that those two, the the two facial expressions work so yeah. well together. Somebody was like, man, I got to write a movie off this. Yeah. Um, the, you know, we're talking about, <laughs> we've, we've gotten really distracted again, but, but, mm. you know, and homosexuality in the eighties, that plays, that plays to that too. It was, it was a time you know, it's a, it's a time where AIDS is really coming to, to the foreground. So because of a sort of victimization there, it is a time where where there's a little bit more social acceptance of it, I think. Um, you know, post Stonewall, post post a lot of a lot of things. Um, decriminalization <laughs> certainly is going on quite yeah. a bit. Um and you know, this this movie very very much accepts his and is a homosexual and this <coughs> And again, it's 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 just the eighties feel of this movie is so perfect, and you know it was made in seventy nine, uh, which we keep repeating. But, but because it's, it is it's, because it's true, it feels you know, like it was made in it's very much eighty four. Yeah, it, it, it's very much looking forward to to what what it's all going to be like in in the West in the eighties. Um, yeah, it works. It works really well, and even you know. We we mentioned Hoskins has has some some minor political officials officials on his on his uh, payroll, but like you know Helen Helen Mirren's character says she played uh, polo or lacrosse or something with with Princess Anne, and it's like really believable, you know. <laughs> it's not necessary. She might be joking, but she might not. She's the sort of character, and this is the sort of position they're in where that might really be true. Yeah, I mean, they're that the life of a mob boss is London. playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because of his efforts to legitimize and... himself, he kind of comes off as a businessman. Yeah, he doesn't really come yeah. off like. I mean, obviously, we see him doing very mobstery things, but like. The way he yeah. brings in the New York mafia people is so business like. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't feel Absolutely. like mobster behavior. It feels like businessman behavior, and I think that's maybe a really weirdly premonist. Uh, I can't say. I can't figure out. Think of the word. Uh, Pression. Yeah, a view of how. I think I said I, that wrong matter. too. The point is, is there? <laughs> it's another kind of like amazing thing where the director or the writer or both have kind of looked into the future where like there's going to be a very unclear line of the difference between corporation and gang like and mafia yeah. it, like where that yeah. those lines are not so terribly clear the way the two operate yeah. are not so different <clears throat> yeah and it's 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 it reminds me you know there's a lot of movies that sort of parody that 
after the 80s, you know, and it's been a while since we've mentioned Hudson Hawk, so, so I <laughs> no, will. we need to mention Hudson uh, Hawk in every episode. Yeah, yeah. The villains, the villains in Hudson Hawk are, 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 you know, it's 1992 in Hudson Hawk, yeah, when Hudson Hawk is made, and, and it's a very cartoonish movie, but they're, they're over the top remnants of Reaganomics, um, that, they they are are so big into business that what they want to do is crash the market by producing gold uh because it will make them rich <laughs> right right it's that sort of yeah and there's no yeah, it's, it's so hard to identify the difference between yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's business people and and it's, it's corporate por- corporate gangsters is is basically yeah. is basically what we're getting into and and then Hudson Hunt plays off of but yeah it's a time you know, and and we could get, we could follow that really politically if we wanted no, to. We're but, not going um, to, but it, but we won't. But it, yeah, it's a it's a time where where the lines between legitimate and illegitimate business are, uh, you know, we, well, we watch RoboCop yeah, every day, right. and RoboCop does it for satire. But but, but yeah, the, the lines time, between legitimate and illegitimate almost business. seems to be setting up that sort of satire yeah. itself because. This is not a thing that has really started to happen. At that point, started to happen that much yet, and so it's yeah. almost like somebody has looked into their crystal ball and thought, "Wow, this is going to be pretty effed up." Yeah, this is this is where we're headed, and <laughs> it does super well. I mean, what what year was Thatcher elected? Let's find out. Uh, she, yeah, she uh, she became PM in seventy nine. And, and obviously, if she became PM, um, things, you know, things were on its way. Well, yeah, to, I mean, like, it's not a huge leap. I mean, the person who wrote this yeah. is not, like, is not an actual fortune teller. But at the same yeah. time, but you couldn't, I don't think, probably at that time, really know that the way things were going to turn out. And, yeah. you know, yeah. they hit it pretty, you know square on the head so. yeah I think yeah it's it's really it's it's amazing how it's a poignant uh, very film. quick essentially <laughs> basically yeah it's a poignant film it's a poignant yeah. film and and it's a poignant film it's also a very violent gangster movie it's, and that's weird yeah and, and <laughs> that's that's weird and wonderful it is and it, um, it, yeah like somebody yeah did a very good job Especially, like, when you see yes. them, like, bringing in the people on, like, the meat hooks and stuff. It's kind of really interesting to watch that sort of blend in your mind with the idea of, like, corporations run amok kind of thing. Because it's like, yeah. is it that big of a leap? Not really. You know? That, no. like, some crazy... Because, you know, this is almost something you would see in a 80s, like, one of those, like, Wall Street type films or something. Not yeah. quite on yeah. butcher's hooks, but pretty close. Like dudes with like suits dragging people into the into the boardroom is certainly something we saw <laughs> in films at that time. Yeah. So you know, yeah. guys with who wear you know sunglasses at night and and inside <laughs> dragging men into boardrooms yeah. and sitting them down in boardroom chairs rather violently. I mean, is that so <laughs> different than meat hooks? Not really. <laughs> it's 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 very ideologically similar. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, there's a pretty um, practical difference. One is yeah. upside down, and one is not. <laughs> yes, uh, but like, yes. the point is, is that the the very, the basic notion is there. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I I started this rabbit trail in my head for a second of of you know what. What the title of the movie and, and the timing of the movie means for Bob Hoskins' character, if we're setting him up as some sort of messianic. <laughs> let's thing. not do that. Let's, um, like, it's so, but I don't. I really don't want to go down that. To one. Any sort of um, yeah, yeah. We don't. We don't yeah. get a resurrection. It's confusing, and I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. But at the same, basically, at we've the kind of discovered that any this, protagonist this, in any film could be compared to Jesus. Oh well, no. As 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 an English major, uh, I have to. It's. You know, everyone is Jesus in purgatory. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Bob Hoskins, uh, he, uh, he lays down his life for, uh, for yes. the mushroom. <laughs> yeah, 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 for stuff. A different movie again. Yeah. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> anyway. For um, <laughs> dock space? I don't know. It's it's too early for me to do that off yeah. the cuff. <laughs> let's not let's not do that. Let's just yeah. we can just put a blanket statement no. on like the website for the podcast. Like <laughs> all films are somehow Yes. Everyone yes. is Jesus yeah. everywhere. Just accept it it's so that. we don't have to say it anymore. Just no. No. But this yeah, I, I, I think yeah. I really I really yeah, like so this movie. I. It's, like I said, it's going on kind of my little mental short list about films in Criterion Collection that didn't make me want to vomit. <laughs> Which, yeah, at this point, there's been a lot of those so far. That, that, that the ratio is not as good as it should be. There's quite a few more. There's quite a bit. I can't say. I can't speak English, apparently. Um, there's many more films that I do not ever want to see again than ones that I want to see again. But this one's going on the list of yeah. ones that I well, can easily watch with somebody and be like, yeah, or even recommend to somebody and say, yeah, you should watch it. It's a, it's a good film. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot fewer movies, I think, on this list that I would recommend. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm trying to say. Other people. But but there's quite a few, there's quite a few I'd watch yeah. again. In fact, there's only one movie. There's only one movie we've watched that, so that far I would burn that every I will, copy I that I will never... I will never watch again. Um, mm. And in fact, it's it's be, it's become my 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 go to worst film ever. You know, let's get this done. This but let's get this done. Uh, phrase now is well, it can't be as bad as watching yeah. Salo. <laughs> so so that's that's what I use to convince myself to do yeah, things right. Now. Like nothing will ever be that bad. But <laughs> no, I mean, but there's quite a few that I you know. Yeah, I guess I would watch again if no, no, I wouldn't. There's yeah. many of them I wouldn't, because I can't con- conceive of a situation where I would. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Beauty and the Beast is not well, a terrible. Yeah. Given film, the but I would given the opportunity for a few, like if it were to come yeah. on TV, I'd change the channel. If somebody I knew or loved or cared about was watching it, I would leave the room. So I can't conceive of a situation where I would do it again. And like, so there's like maybe like five films we've watched that I would actively be willing to sit down and watch again. So. Okay. Okay. And this is well, one of them. This is one. Well, this is one of them. Could put this, this on and be like, yeah, well, we can sit down and watch this. Yeah, let's watch this movie. So, so there you go. Well, that's it. That's I mean, that's, <laughs> I was, the, that's I was, the verdict on the film, as far as I'm concerned. Is well, I would watch yeah. it again. One more small note, because because I've just watched it. I just I've just come across it in my in my short bit of notes what? I wrote about this. Uh, oh. The 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 opening where uh, our, our gay bling, character bling, meets bling, meets the guy in the bar. The guy he meets mm-hmm. in the bar looks like my college roommate. Oh, there you roommate. go. Maybe it was your college roommate. And, uh, He's a time traveler. I don't think he was alive. He could be a time traveler. I guess that's possible. But I think it's rather unwise for a time traveler to appear in films. But um, yeah, maybe, yeah. you know. But things happen. Not that bright of a time traveler. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, we don't need anything to else you want to say? about this film because we're talking about time travel now. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for listening you. to Lost in Great Junior once again. Uh, sorry, we always fall apart and don't know how yeah, to end Yeah, and these sorry, things. we always end up uh, come back. travel and Jesus. It's it's a thing. I don't know. <laughs> yes, and Hudson Hawk. It's you know we we have to. Um, Hudson, <laughs> I love Hudson too. Hawk. We're the only two um, people on Earth. I know, and we're the, we're the only two people on Earth who love Hudson Hawk. <laughs> Join us next time when we will be discussing uh, 1973 Paul Morrissey movie uh, Flesh for Frankenstein, um, and I'm sure that'll yeah. be fun. We'll see you then.
You've been listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.